Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, intriguing Dutch whisper puzzle today with a diamond in it. Uh, we'll look at that in a moment now. Don't forget that on Patreon we've still got the Alice in Sudoku Land hunt. Lots of people are still sending the answer for the 12 puzzle full hunt. You're not going to get a shout out, I'm afraid, anymore because that was for the first 10 days. We did make that clear on the document. Um, but you can still enter the competition by getting any three puzzles done. Um, and we're getting lots of entries still. So there's still six days left for that. Do have a go. The puzzles are brilliant. And uh, you will be rewarded for your efforts, even if you don't win a prize. Uh, now, also, you'll be rewarded if you shell out the few pounds or dollars that it requires to buy one of our apps. Because each of them has 100 brilliant puzzles. The Gas app has 60, actually but the others all have a hundred puzzles, many of them by some of the best constructors the world has to offer. Um, and those apps are brilliant. Do check them out. Um, I'm sometimes accused of underselling them, which is probably fair because there are hints if you can't uh, solve the puzzles and they will advance your journey in variant Sudoku. Now, um, they're definitely worth doing. We have a set of variant rules to cope with today, so I won't mention the merchandise. Let's just look at the rules of this puzzle by Bonehead, whose debut, I believe, this is. Wasn't Bonehead Oasis's bassist? Or maybe drummer? Not sure. Um, anyway, I'm not sure that this is the same Bonehead. It might be. It might not. And that reminds me, we're doing body parts as the um, opening guest for Wordle in a Minute at the moment. Um, and yeah, it's going to be D when you watch it tomorrow. Well done if you can think of a five-letter body part beginning with D. Anyway, uh, it's not Dutch, although this is Dutch diamond. So normal Sudoku rules apply. That means one to nine in every row, every column, and every box of the grid. On the orange line... Neighbouring digits must differ by at least four. So these are not German whispers, these are Dutch whispers. Um, and digits do not repeat on the orange line. Okay, that's unusual. So we haven't had that before, or not certainly not often. A purple line contains a set of consecutive digits in any order. That's the Renban rule. Um, the killer rule is that digits don't repeat in cages, uh, which show their sums. So these three digits will add up to 19 with no repeats. And the diagonal rule is that there are no repeat digits on this marked diagonal. So plenty of little things to be getting on with in this puzzle. Uh, and it may be a matter of trying to sort the wheat from the chaff, as it were, and work out where we do get started. So, interesting challenge. Do have a go on the first link under the video if you want to try the puzzle in our software. Thanks to Sven for allowing me to create it. I have changed quite a few of the colours and uh, sizes of lines that Bonehead used originally because uh, they were quite hard to, to type over. Anyway, let's get cracking and see how we get on with it. So... Where do we start? It's quite interesting. I mean, there's a one in that eight cage. Yeah, hang on. There's a Renban in the same row as this eight cage. So this is either one, two, five, in which case this Renban couldn't be low digits. You couldn't get enough ones on it to be in a sequence. You'd have to use either six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, nine. But this could be one, three, four. There's always going to be a seven on this Renban. If this is 1, 3, 4, these are selected from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And any sequence there uses a 7. And I don't think this is actually going to take us much further, so I probably shouldn't have started here. Ooh, 5 linking into a Renban in the same column. That's interesting. Yes, this cannot be a 2, 3 cage of 5. And the reason is... No, hang on, that's not true. It could be. If that was a 2 and that was a 3, this could be 4, 5, 6 in some order. Now, alternatively... OK, so if it's a 2 and a 3, they're in that order, and this is 4, 5, 6. If it's a 4, 1 cage, that can't be the 1, because there would turn out to be a 4 in those cells, clashing with the 4 that would need to be here. So the lower digit in this 5 cage is there, and the higher digit is there. Now, 
And we've got to consider the, the Dutch whisper line. What's going on? You see, I know, I'm pretty sure I know that there is a sequence of the nine digits. Oh, this is just an aid memoir, but the only way you can get a five, okay, I know that this line is eight cells long, but just to think about it, I'm gonna imagine that it's nine cells long. I mean, you, you'll think I'm mad, but I think there is only one sequence with nine cells. The five would always have to be between the one and the nine. So let's choose one way round they can be that way. Um, wherever the four appeared on a nine cell line, it would have to be flanked by nine and eight because they're the only two digits it's allowed to sit next to. Uh, then, because we've ruled out four and five, wherever the three appeared, it would have to be near next to eight and seven. And the two would have to be next to seven and six. And the six could connect back up to the one. So this is a kind of circular nine cell Dutch whisper sequence which I'm just looking at to think about. Ah, I think I've got it. Right, 159. This is the interesting sequence on a Dutch whisper line because this changes the alternating polarity. Yes, this is it. This is important for this line. Right, if the line didn't... If the line didn't have a five on, I'm going to start from there and then get back to that is correct. But if the line didn't have a five on it, the cell, the digits would have to alternate in polarity, which means they'd have to be a high one and then a low one. And by high, I mean greater than five. And by low, I mean less than five. And that would have to keep operating to maintain this difference of four. And you would get a line with either high or low digits on the alternate bits and the the opposite on the other alternating cells. So you'd be going high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, or the other way around. However, if you'd have a five on this line, it's going to mess that up. Because when a five appears, as we saw in the sequence, and this is the only thing actually that made that sequence worth looking at, it must appear between a 1 and a 9. That's exactly the same typo I did earlier. Um, it must appear between a 1 and a 9 because they're the only digits. And then, since you're not allowed another 5 on the line if it appears once, apart from that, the digits must keep alternating in polarity because five's the not only the only way to make them change the parity alternation, it must change the parity alternation in a situation in which there's no repeat digits. I hope I've explained that correctly. Anyway, this line connecting to itself and being eight cells long can't have a five on because that would alternate the polarity. And if you suddenly alternated the polarity here, you had a five there. Let's just imagine that the line had started here as purple and you'd been happily alternating polarity up to here, but then you stick a five in and then you go green because that's what five has done. It's alternated the polarity from nine to one or the other way around. Then you go purple and now these two are too close together. They're both from say six, seven, eight, nine or from one, two, three, four. And that can't be right. So what is right is the idea that you don't have a five on this line. It's the other eight digits. And that's very interesting and very clever and very useful. And it's very useful from this point of view. You've got four digits of the same polarity in this box. Well, they can't be low or we're never going to make nine work. Nine has got to have two, well, actually two super low digits on it from one, two, three. I know that from various killer and other types of puzzles where we've had to make up nine with three different digits before. It's always got two super low digits on. But actually, even the fact that it has to have one low digit means that these greens are the high digits in the central box. So I'm now going to color them orange. I'm going to color the purple ones blue. Blue is low, orange is high. And that's really weird now. We've got two lows. We're going to need two super lows in the nine cage. 
but that's all right, as long as the other digit... Oh, well, it can't be high. Yeah, that's interesting. This is a 6789 set. So we can't have a 6-2-1 combination here, because one of the oranges is 6. Now, we also can't have a 2-3-4 combination here, because these digits are from 1-2-3-4 as well, and we'd have 5, a quintuple of 1-2-3-4. And if you count up 1-2-3-4, it's only 4 digits. Knowledge bomb there from cracking the Riveter. Uh, so you couldn't have a quintuple of 4 digits, because that is just meaningless. So the 5 is involved. So this is a 1-3-5 set. These two are two and four. There's no repeat digits on the diamond, so those are one and three. These two are two and four to make up the central box. Ah, yes, look, this this 17, uh, sorry, it's a 15 cage, but that's still huge in the context of these numbers. This one can't be a one because you'd only be up to 3 or 5 by adding that, and you'd need a 10 or a 12 here. We're not allowed to write 10 or 12 into one cell. So that's a 3. There's our first digit. That makes this a 1 over the other side. Now this can't be a 2, because that would still have to be a 10. So that's a 4. We're getting all these even digits in the central row done. Uh, all these low digits in the central row is what I'm trying to say when I say even. That's a 5, because it sees a 1 and a 3. Um, that's now a 1, 3 pair. Now, this 3 is not allowed to hit a 6 on the Dutch whisper line. It can hit a 7. That feels very unfamiliar because on a German whisper line, 3 and 7 is the, the pair I'm constantly trying to remember to avoid. But here it's allowed. Um, now, this 19 cage has become easy to do, annoyingly, because that's high. Oh, the diagonal. The diagonal matters now. We've got a five on it. And this group of digits on the diagonal, therefore they share polarity. They're either higher than five or lower than five. They can't go through five because we're not allowed to repeat five on the diagonal. Now they can't be high or we'd have five high digits on the diagonal. And there are only four in our definition of high in this puzzle. So these are low. They're blue. They are, well, they definitely involve two and three. They're from one, two, three, four. They're either a set of one, two, three, or two, three, four. Now, what does that mean is going on on this line, which is getting very hard to fill, because it's got to have some low digits on. Or has it? It's got to have one there. I mean, these two are definitely low digits. I mean, I'm not planning to colour the whole grid, but this is reasonably helpful here. Oh, we've got a 1 here as well, so that's not a 1. Um, OK, 2, 3 has become impossible. If that was a 2 and that was a 3, there'd have to be a 4 on this line, and that cell couldn't be filled. So this cage is now a 1, 4 cage. That's not a 4, it's 2 or 3. Now, that's forming a virtual pair with this cage. This cage is either 1, 2, 5, in which case that's a 3, or 1, 3, 4, in which case that's a 2. And that means 1 and 2 have been used up in this row somehow. Oh, look at this cage. This is telling us everything. We've got 1, 2, 3, or 4 in this cell, and it's a 13 cage. There's over, only one overlap between 13 cages and 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's by putting a 4 here. 9 here. This isn't a 4. In fact, this pair is a 2-3 pair now. Um, this must have a 5 on and a 6 now. Even if that was a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the minimum here. So we're definitely putting a 5 and a 6 on that Renban. Maybe with a 7, maybe with a 3 somewhere, which wouldn't be there now. Two or three there. What's this? This, now that we've had nine written there, it can't go on the line, so six is going on the line. Oh, the, sorry, the very sensible way to think about this row now is where does four go? I hadn't thought of this. Oh, look, that four is actually looking at that cell. It might be worth my while to get rid of the colouring now. I'm going to do it because it's slightly obscuring some of the cells for me. So there we go. Um, now, I'll look at these high digits in a moment. What I'm going to do first is look at this row in more detail. 
does this have to be 876? No, it doesn't. If that's 675, that's 143, that's 2, and that's 8. But if this is 876, then 1, 2, and 3 are used up between those cells, and this can't be a 4. This would then be a 5. So it's only got two possibilities, and they are rather distant, 5 and 8. Now, what should I be doing next? Oh, I know what I should be doing, is looking again at the diagonal. 2, 3, and 4 have gone on it, and 5. Ah, 1 can't go in these cages, so 1 goes there. That A 1 there would need 11 as its complement, and a 1 there would need 12. So these are big digits, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Well, that one can't be 6. This is... Now 3, 4, or 5. This is 6, 7, 5, or 4. Forgive me. Pencil marking cells extensively. It's what I do. Um, that's not a 1. Come on, this must be... Oh, that's not a 5. Oh, in this central row, we've got 6, 7, and 9 to place. Now, this can't be a 9, because 4 can't reach a 9 on a 4-cell Renban. So, now this Renban has a 5 on it in one of those cells. Still, it could be 3, 4, 5, 6, which would put a 3 here and a 5 here, or it could be 4, 5, 6, 7, which has a bit more freedom. Ah, yes, I was going to look at these now. Oh, the 4. The 4 is very telling here. That can only sit next to 8 and 9. So, that's the 8, 9 pair. This is the 7, 6 pair. This has become a 7 just by... Sudoku elimination, once we know that's an 8-9 pair, we get 7 there. 6 here. Now that can't have a 6 in on the diagonal. Um, ah, I can't resolve the 8 and 9 by Dutch whisper rules, I don't think. That 3 obviously is less constrained than the 4. Ooh, strange. Okay. Oh, let's have a look at this Renban, the last one that we haven't looked at. Ah, you see, I wasn't really approaching this because it has this get out cell that, that lets... You can't restrict the sequence so much because almost anything could go in that cell. But now this group of cells can't use 3, 8 or 4. And I think one of those digits must be on a 4 cell Renban. Like the minimum is 1, 2, 3, 4. The kind of... In the middle, you have 4, 5, 6, 7, or 5, 6, 7, 8. And at the top, you have 6, 7, 8, 9. There's always a 3, 4, or 8 on any 4-cell Renban. So since those can't go in those cells, that get-out digit has to be here. I don't think it can be a 3, because you'd then need a 4 on this Renban, and that would clash. So the get-out digit is a 4 or an 8. Ah. If it's a 4, we can't have a 3 on the line. So if it's a 4, this is 5, 6, 7. Now that does work. If it's an 8... Oh, that's lovely. If it's an 8, there are two alternatives. One is 5, 6, 7 again. But the other is 6, 7, 9. But that won't work because it would make this cell unfillable if you put 6, 7, 9 here. They're all in the same box as row 5, column 9. So... This can still be 4 or 8, but this is always a 5, 6, 7 triple beneath it. That's a lovely Renban. That's very clever. So this becomes a 9. We've got a 1, 2, 4 triple down here. That can't be 1. The 1, 2, 4 triple looks at that cell. Um, up here we've got a 2 and a 3 to place, which gives me a 2, 3 pair in column 1 that I can't use. That 9. Oh, that's giving me a 6, 7 pair here. So what can this be? It can't... Oh, there's lots of things it can't be. It can't be any of those numbers. 1, 2, 4, 3, 6, or 7. So this... Let's just get rid of corner marks. This is 5, 8, or 9. It can't be 8 or 9. A 4 can't reach an 8 on a 4-cell Renban. So that's a 5. This is now... 3, 6, or 7. It's not 3, is it? Because there's a 2, 3 pair in this box. So it's 6 or 7. That's 6 or 7. That is a pair. 
I'm just trying to recap. There we go. One, four, five, six, seven. This cell sees all of those, including the six, seven pair. It sees the two, three pair, and it sees nine, and it must therefore be a naked eight. That becomes a five. This Ren band triple is now six, seven, eight. We must know what's going into the eight cage. There's no five in it, so it's one, three, four. Did I not establish earlier? I was on the verge of saying earlier that we knew where four went in this row and it went in the cage, but I don't think I ever said it. And that was really cheating myself out of something quite useful. One, three, four there puts a two here. That's three in the corner, losing its religion. We get a one here. We've got six or seven to sort out there. Now up the column, we've got a nine and a three to complete column two. This 19 cage, ah, that hasn't got any easier, but that four is looking at this group of cells. Maybe it always was. I'm very sorry if I wrote four, eight as a pair into there with a four here. That was uh, just not paying attention, if that was the case. Now, we can't have eight in these cages either, so we can remove the pairs that use that. This has become a seven, nine pair on the diagonal, and this is eight on the diagonal. Um, this is eight in column seven. That's a six now. Oh, maybe I only recently put in this 8-9 pair or something. I don't know. Has that 4 been there for ages? I have no idea anymore. One, five, two. So now let's have a look at this 19 cage now. Bingo. This 9 needs another 10 pair. There are four possible 10 pairs. One of them is 1-9. Impossible. One of them is 2-8. Impossible. One of them is 4-6. Impossible. This must be a 3-7 pair. And look, that sorts out this as a 9. That makes this a 7 and 5. The diagonal's complete. We've got 2, 3, and 6 left to complete box 3. Uh, oh, that can't be a 5, so we can place 5 in row 3 there. That 3 has sorted out the 2, 3 pair. That sorts out everything in row 3, which is now finito benito. Um, 5, 2 pair in this box must go there. 4, 8 pair. And I think it's all coming together beautifully now. So 7 and 6, 7 and 6. Finish off columns 3 and 1. Um, this 7 and... no, it's a 7-8 pair. It's not done. I thought it was a 7-6 pair, but I was misreading. There's a 4 to go here in box 8. 2 and 7. Hmm, columns 7, 8, 9 are a bit harder than everything else. Oh, there's a 5 to go in box 8. That's quite big. 3 in this row. 9 and 6. Row 7 is fully finished. That's become a five on the Renban. Three and six in box three are done. If I could just hit the cells. There we go, three, nine. This is a two, seven, six triple in this row and I can fill them all in. This is one, eight, nine at the top, which I can't fill in. I've only got one of each of those looking up at them from rows below. This seven, six pair is done. This is a two, five, seven triple, which are easy to complete. 1 and 9 here. Now I can do the 7 and 8 and up at the top 1, 8, 9. Now these must, they're not a deadly pattern, it's okay. That's a 4, look, and that's a 3. Column 8 was the key there. 1 and 4, 1, and we finish off with a 2. The solution is correct. There we go, that's a lovely puzzle. A nice interaction of, well, three of our most common constraints and Dutch whispers, which worked very nicely. I assume that you had to do that thinking about this non-repeating diamond and not having a five on to get a handle on this puzzle. It certainly, if you didn't have to, it made it a lot easier. Um, I'm sorry about the whole aid memoir business, which was thoroughly unnecessary as it turned out, although maybe... 
educative nonetheless. Thanks for watching as always. Absolute pleasure to be with you on Cracking the Cryptic and I hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.